before I get into things, you might have to excuse me for being a little bit more low energy than usual. But right now, I just wanted to focus on something a little bit fun um, and a little bit for me. And I thought the perfect thing would be to film a little book haul because I have acquired a few books over the past couple of weeks that I would like to share with you because I'm excited to read them all and talking about books I recently acquired and I'm excited about is something that is always very pleasurable so I thought I might do a little book haul, like I said, but just in case anybody commented. So let's get into the books, shall we? The first two I have to show you I picked up with my friend Jill in Blackwells. Um, Jill recently started a booktube channel as well so if you haven't checked that out I will link it down below. Um, Jill is one of my best friends and we have so much in common when it comes to books. Blackwells quite often has three for two on a lot of their books, especially classics. And I picked up two books. I couldn't really find a third that I was interested in that day, um, but Jill got a third. I know for a fact she's acquired tons of books recently, so I'm expecting a book haul soon. But the two that I picked up were the Penguin Classics edition of Russian Magic Tales from Pushkin to Platonov. Uh, edited by Robert Chandler. So this is just a collection of short stories from Russian authors with um, magical themes and, and plot lines. On the back it says, in these tales young women go on long and difficult quests, wicked stepmothers turn children into geese and czars ask dangerous riddles with help or hindrance from magical dolls, cannibal witches, talking skulls, stolen wives and brothers disguised as wise birds. So we've got a mixture here from sort of classic Russian authors, um, some stories that might be considered more fairy tales, but they're not all fairy tales, they're just all magical. And I really enjoy reading Russian short stories and I'd like to read more Russian literature. They had a massive Russian literature display in the bookshop because it is the 100th year anniversary of the Russian Revolution. So there's been a lot of promotion around Russian literature and yeah, like I said, this one stood out to me and I thought I'd give it a shot. I also picked up a kind of classic horror novel of the 1960s and that is The Case Against Satan by Ray Russell. Ray Russell's quite a famous horror writer for this time. I've never read any of his work before, although I have since read this one. You might have seen me talk about it in my currently reading video. I've since finished it and I wasn't quite as in love with it as I thought I would be or was at the beginning of the reading experience. I think it started to get a little bit into the territory of how shocking and kind of gross can we be or disgusting can we be and shock the reader rather than um, being particularly clever but I still quite enjoyed reading it. I really enjoy science fiction and horror and those kind of genres from the 1950s and 60s. People like Shirley Jackson so I wanted to give it a shot and I will actually read more Ray Russell because I was enjoying it even if I just didn't quite enjoy where it went. And this one is about an exorcism of a, of a young girl. I picked up a few second-hand books as well, um, two of which I found in Linlithgow, which is um, a little town in Scotland near where my granny lives. And I often go into the second-hand bookshops when I'm there. And I picked up this for 80p and it's Velma Pollard's Considering Women. And this was published by the Women's Press back in the day. Um, you can recognise what they publish by these lovely stripy spines that they all share. And this is actually a collection of Jamaican short stories that was first published in the 1980s. The themes of this collection are women seeking freedom and it's so short and it was on 80p and the Women's Press have published some amazing authors including Alice Walker so I thought it might just be worth giving a shot plus this cover is beautiful. I also found and this which is Elfland by Frida Warrington. This is published by Tor and look at this cover. Is this not just what you think of when you think of a fantasy novel? This is a fantasy novel cover and I had to pick it up off the shelf when I saw it because I don't know much about this one. I don't really know how to explain it so I'll just read the first paragraph from the blurb and that is Rosie Fox is a daughter of Ethereals, an ancient race from the spiral, the innermost realm of the other world. Who lives secretly among us? Yet she and her kind are bereft of their origins because on earth, in a beautiful village named Cloudcroft, the great gates between worlds stands sealed. Basically about a kind of fae type people or elf type people. I'd be interested to know if any of you have read this or anything else by this author. And lastly from second hand shops I picked up The King Must Die, a novel by Mary Renault, author of The Last Wine, which is apparently one of her famous ones that sits in the bottom. I recognise her name from a series of books she wrote set in the Persian Empire. She, said she writes a lot of books 
set in antiquity and this one follows Theseus, uh, king of Athens, who slayed the Minotaur famously. And this story reconstructs Theseus's youth and uh, fictional history really. Um, so I'm hoping this is good. I heard a lot of good things about this author and she's written a lot of books set in antiquity so I have high expectations. It was first published in the 1950s. Another beautiful edition as well. I then have two books I was sent by a publisher and happened to arrive here in my parents house whilst I, I've been here and they are both books by Maggie Nelson who I have heard raved about online especially by my friend Jen and I was really really keen to pick up Bluettes anyway but literally didn't request this, it would just happen to be sent to me by Publishing House who clearly knows me very well and I'm very grateful to her so thank you so much. This is Bluettes which is a sort of non-fiction book going into the different images and manifestations of the colour blue and the history of the colour blue and people and things associated with the colour blue and what the colour blue means to the author. Sounds gorgeous plus gorgeous new edition. And to match with that I have the paperback of The Red Parts, an autobiography of a trial by Maggie Nelson. This is actually about a trial that was conducted to do with Maggie Nelson's aunt who was abducted. In 1969, Jane Mixer, a first year law student at the University of Michigan, posted a note on a student notice board to share a lift back to her hometown of Musigan for spring break. She never made it. She was brutally murdered. Her body found a few miles from the campus the following day. Um, and then this is the red parts is Maggie Nelson's singular account of her aunt Jane's death and the trial that took place some 35 years afterwards. Um, so sounds absolutely fascinating, this one. And I'm so pleased to have both of these. The next book I bought myself and that is The Greek and Roman Myths, A Guide to the Classical Stories. This is published by Thames and Hudson and it's a beautiful little book. They have one of these, I believe, for quite a few different mythologies. So there's an Egyptian mythology, a Celtic mythology and a Norse mythology. And um, those are all the ones I'm familiar with. And they're basically just little introductions to these topics and they kind of, almost like a little encyclopedia, it goes through um, the gods, so you get a, a little bit of background to the birth of Zeus, just a, a paragraph. Um, we have the, the war between the titans and the gods, another, just a little paragraph. Really, really basic stuff, encompassing a really broad array of Greek mythology, so a really good introduction to somebody that is very unfamiliar with the topic. Um, and it's just looking for an overview. One of the things I really like about this book though and was what particularly drew me to it is that it has it has a lot of little sections like this which says later art and culture Prometheus and it talks about how Prometheus has um, kind of made his way into different periods of history in the art and culture. So we've got paintings from the 1500s being talked about. Not a lot of detail, but a really nice overview and a beautiful book as well. I was then actually sent another book that is about classics and that is Homer by Barbara Graziosa. And this is just a lovely little book which is published by Oxford University Press all about Homer, the ancient Greek epic poet who wrote the Odyssey and the Iliad. In this book, Barbara Graziosa discusses the main literary, historical, cultural and archaeological issues at the heart of these poems and analyses the enduring appeal of Homer and his iconic works. So it just sounds like a really nice overview of the poet and a bit of the history of the study of the poet. Um, there are people who think, say, that there wasn't one man called Homer and perhaps the Odyssey and the Iliad were written by different people. So there's lots of theories surrounding Homer and uh, yeah, I'd be really interested to see what this little book covers. And lastly, another little book on a classics theme is the very short introduction to classical mythology by Helen Morales. This again is published by Oxford University Press. I picked this one up for myself though. You might be thinking, why, Jean, you know about classical mythology. Yes, I do know about classical mythology. but. These books aren't just for beginners, they're for kind of everybody because they're points of thought, they're introductions to topics, they're overviews of their certain elements of a topic and like I said, just points of thought. So 
discussion and thought for anybody at any point in their study. And I actually am quite a fan of Helen Morales' scholarship um, and have enjoyed much of her writing in the past, so thought I would probably enjoy this little introduction to classical mythology. And like it says here, this imaginative and stimulating very short introduction goes beyond a simple retelling of the stories to explore the rich history and diverse interpretations of classical mythology, examining how myths are used and understood in both high art and popular culture. It takes the reader from the bedrooms of Pompeii to skyscrapers in New York and finds classical myths in a variety of unexpected places. So something I'm greatly interested in is what myths mean to people and the interpretations of myths and how myths are represented differently both in antiquity and in modern times. And a great part of my thesis is looking at the way specifically orators manipulate myths and use myths in a specific context to argue specific points and uh, that is something that when you're reading any myth in antiquity is worth bearing in mind that the writer often has an ulterior motive and there's many different versions of most of the myths so there's a reason a writer has picked a specific version and these myths meant very different things to different people so I am always interested in different approaches to studying and interpreting myth and I thought perhaps this might actually open up some realms of thought that I hadn't encountered before or just point me in the direction of some other places I might find that. But those are all of the books I have to show you here. Do let me know if you have read any of them or are interested in reading any of them. I always love to hear from you and until next time guys, happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye!